Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video is on Project Management Introduction to Waisaki Models. It's based on the book by Waisaki, Effective Project Management, and I've divided up the book into three different sections. In this video, we'll look at the first section, chapters 4 through 12, which is different project management models. The models in chapters 4 through 12, I start with the fundamentals of PM Bach and relate that to Waisaki's definitions, and then I go into the different models. In comparing the titles of the process groups between Waisaki and PM Bach, some of them are the same. But scoping in Waisaki is the same as initiating and launching, and Waisaki is the same as executing. But as he states in his book, the content and tools and techniques comes from his experience. So they're not exactly the same order as you'll find them in PM Bach, but the content of PM Bach is still there. It's just organized differently. Waisaki organizes his content starting with a project management life cycle model. Here's an example of the traditional project management life cycle model, scope, plan, launch, monitor and control, and close. In the scope, he describes a goal, which is the primary purpose or objective of the project, and the solution, how to achieve the goal. Then he develops the content in each one of these, which is a little different than PM Bach. For example, in scope, the scoping process overview, which is in Chapter 4. He starts with the COS, Conditions of Satisfaction, which define the necessary elements of project success. And then the Requirements Breakdown Structure, that lists the details of the requirements that describe the conditions of satisfaction. And then the Project Management Lifecycle Model. Here's an example of the traditional. We'll see others in this video. And then the Project Overview Statement which can be described as an executive summary of this information and is similar to a summary of the scope statement and the charter in PM Bach. In the planning process overview, Chapter 5, he starts with a joint project planning session, JPPS. And from the project overview statement, POS, he identifies something called the project definition statement, which is describing the POS from the perspective of the project team that would be sufficient for the project team to understand the project enough to begin planning the project. And then, with the requirements breakdown structure, they begin defining the work breakdown structure and the critical path in the CPM, which is the time schedule. In launching, they have the team development, the kickoff meetings, the operation structure and plans, the scope change control, the resources and baselines, and here's where the plan and baselines are defined, and finally, they identify the work packages. In the Monitoring and Controlling Process Overview, Chapter 7, here's where the, where the reports and graphs are of the plans and baselines, scope bank, documentation from communications, and the meetings. And finally, closing the process, Chapter 8, where we have acceptance, the documentation, and audit of the project success, and also audit of the project process, and then the final report. And within these process groups, the concept of PM Bach is still contained even though the organization is different and the order is different. Next is the Project Management Lifecycle Models, Chapters 9 through 12. Waisaki defines three project types, traditional, agile, and extreme. And within each project type are two Project Management Lifecycle Models. To distinguish the difference between the project types and models, he uses the description of the goal and solution of a project, and the different descriptions are given in the table. If the goal is clearly known and the solution is clearly defined, then that is a traditional type project with two project management life cycle models. If the goal is clearly known but the solution is not clearly defined, then Waisaki uses that to define an agile type project and he describes two project management life cycle models. If the goal is not clearly defined, then Waisaki describes those projects as being an extreme type of project, but he describes two versions of the project life cycle model. The first one, if the goal and the solution is not clear, he describes that as an extreme type project. But if the goal is not clear but the solution is clear, then he defines that as an emergency type project where you have extreme spelled backwards because here we have a solution in search of a goal. So that represents the three project types 
and six project management lifecycle models we will examine. Although each project lifecycle model has a distinct definition, in practice, projects can and usually contain multiple models at different times depending on the changing needs of a project from charter to close. This video was merely an overview of the project management lifecycle models presented in Wysocki. This ends the lecture video on project management introduction to Wysocki models. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.